over the last decade plus, the relationship between U.S. and India has grown tremendously um, in the defense side. I think defense trade now stands at over $21 billion. And so from very humble beginnings, the uh, relationship has really ratcheted up, not only in terms of defense trade, but also in the mill-to-mill -mill exercises, in the, the quad formation, and, and, and therefore the, the quad partners were actually doing the Malabar exercises, for example, even before the quad was formed. So I think the trajectory is uh, one of convergence and one of increased opportunities as we look at many common threats and the geopolitics uh, that surround us yeah. uh, with uh, co many common interests. So I do think that the trajectory of the defense relationship is going to go north. Okay. Uh, also to ask you about a deal which has now been in the works for five to six years. This is about the Predator armed drones uh, for, the, for the Indian Defense Forces. We we hear from the we hear from reports and from government sources that this is now in advanced stages of negotiations. Uh, where do you think we are heading with this deal? Uh, and if it goes through, how soon would you be able to deliver on it? So um, this, as you rightly said, is a government-to-government -government discussion that's been ongoing, and we, as General Atomics, stand by to support India in uh, the requirements. Uh, as you know, the MQ-9B is. Uh, the latest and greatest um, uh, technology and a unique technology um, globally. And uh, it's served, uh, the intent is to serve the Army, the Air Force, and the Indian Navy. And I think um, this capability enhances not only the national security of India, but as well as the uh, joint convergence of the relationship and the oper operationalization of many of the foundational agreements that both the countries have signed. Right. How optimistic would you be of uh, this deal going through soon? So again, I'd refer that to the governments um, because they're in discussions. All right. Uh, also to ask you about uh, the, the two Sea Guardian drones that were leased to the Indian Navy, that lease was extended. How has uh, been the collaboration with the Indian Navy uh, with those two Sea Guardian drones? It has been outstanding from what we hear from the customers that they're extremely pleased with the performance of these two drones. The, the, these uh, unmanned aircraft have performed a series of operational missions that are of national security interest. Uh, and uh, from what I understand that the um, performance has been outstanding. Right. Uh, in terms of manufacturing in India, transferring technology to uh, the Indian government, what is your view on that? So the defense relationship, as I, I mentioned, has matured a lot over the last uh, decade plus. And uh, you see some of the best capabilities and platforms. And you see increased amounts of investments into the Indian ecosystem by American companies of creating um, various aspects, whether it is maintenance, uh, repair, overhaul, uh, training, logistics. And I think that trajectory is going to continue to increase because there's shared interest um, in creating you know, economies of scale at, and uh, joint operations in many of these uh, areas. Right. Uh, my final question would be, uh, today there's a lot of focus on indigenization in defense in India, even when it comes to drones, for example. So looking at the defense manufacturing sector in India and the push towards indigenization, any key asks that you have of the Indian government, uh, any areas which you feel that need to be eased up for making it easier for companies like yours to do business? I think the government, I must congratulate, has put in a set of very robust policies. Uh, the Prime Minister has uh, really put in some excellent policies in place with the PLI schemes, etc. And I think uh, it, the frameworks are all there, and it's a matter of executing to those frameworks.